All right, so let's get started. We've seen what a fixed pixel layout looks like. And at this moment, what we're going to be doing is structuring the basic HTML and then applying our CSS to it. But in the meantime, let's just go through a couple of things first. You'll notice that here on my desktop, I've got a little folder here called Killer Sites Layouts. If you've downloaded this through Killer Sites, you're also going to receive this folder and it's going to have a finished version of what we're doing as well as a little archives folder right here. Well, if you're using these files, that's fine. You can continue along in that fashion. Otherwise, if you want to start from scratch, just create a new folder on your desktop, as I've done right here. And I'm just going to show you what we're going to be looking at in terms of our design. I'm going to be creating a very simple two-column layout. And in this two-column layout, there are going to be a number of IDs. Now, again, we're assuming that you've got the basics of CSS covered, and you know what an ID is and how an ID is different from a class or any other sort of CSS selector. So if you are uncomfortable with those ideas, then I would refer you to the Killer Sites CSS training tutorials. And at this point, what we're going to be doing here is to create a very simple two-column structure. As you can see, we're going to have an area defined as header. We're going to have an area over here for our navigation, which we'll call nav, our main content area, and a footer. Around all of these divs that we're going to be naming with IDs, we're going to have one div, one div to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. That's right. They're binding everything together with this div here called container. So the lord of the divs, so to speak, is our container. It's holding everything in place. It's what's going to make our design a fixed pixel design. And we're going to work with the 960 degree width that we spoke about in the earlier example. You'll also notice that there is a three column sketch. And eventually, we'll be turning our two column layout into a fixed three column layout. And along with that, we're going to have another ID over here called the Aside. So if you want to take a look at those, they're inside the Archives folder that I've provided for you. But if you're not using that Archives folder, that's perfectly fine. What I'd like you to do is to just create a new folder. And within that new folder, there are a number of things we're going to do. I've already got an index page here. But quite literally, as you can see, I'm working within Dreamweaver in the code view and we're only going to be doing code so that even if you don't have Dreamweaver you can do this in any text editor that's right you should know at this point that uh, HTML can be created as well as CSS for that matter in any text editor so create a new page save it as a HTML page file save of course and give it the name index.html. Mine is currently blank because we're going to start with the very basic code and I'm going to walk you through everything that we're going to need to make that work. And again, we're going to be following the same design that we talked about here in the archives with a container, a header, nav, main, and a footer. All right, so some other things that you might want to do, this folder that you've created on your desktop will be constantly referring to this as the root folder. Here you'll notice that I've got an index.html page. I'm going to create a new folder right next to it called CSS. And this folder will eventually contain our CSS page. We'll go through creating one and saving it in just a second. And more importantly, linking the CSS page to our new index.html. But we'll get to that in an upcoming video, simply because all we're talking about in this one is the basic HTML structure that we're going to be looking for inside of our index page. Ultimately, we would eventually have things like images and other things if we're using uh, fonts that we want to put up onto our server using the CSS3 at font face declaration. We would have a font folder in here, among other things. And we'll eventually get to all of those things. But at this point, all we're really concerned about is the fact that I want you to create a CSS folder, currently empty, and inside your text editor or Dreamweaver or TextMate or whatever you're using, create a very simple HTML page. So it's a blank page right now. Let's go about 
creating the basic HTML structure. So of course we're going to need a simple HTML tag and I'm just going to separate that tag a little bit and come in here and close that tag. So I've got the opening HTML, closing HTML. As with any HTML structure, within those tags we're going to need our very simple head tag. Don't forget to put in your tags properly as I did not right here. So I'm just going to close that up. And of course I'll leave a little bit of space because we're going to be putting something in the head in just a second. You'll also notice that we will need a very simple body declaration. So we're anthropomorphizing our simple document. So open HTML, closing HTML, open head, closing head, body, and body. Very simple, nothing really all that complicated involved in this. However, now we're going to add a couple of other things to our document. Most importantly, when we're working with a very simple HTML type um, as we're doing right now, HTML page, the simple thing that we need to remember at the very beginning of this page is to include something called a doc type. Now in the past doc types have been much much more complicated but since the advent of HTML5 we can work with a very simplified doc type and it's written something like this. We just come in here and we say doc type. Don't forget to put the exclamation mark first and then I'm just going to say HTML. So doc type HTML is really all we need at this point as most modern browsers will accept this and we're not really going to have to worry about the older declarations that we would normally have written. So at this point as the time of this particular recording we're going to just accept the doc type as it's written here. And for those of you who uh, don't know as much about the doc type, remember this is not really a HTML tag per se. It's just really instructions to the web browser about what version of the markup language the page is written in. And it's important that you specify the doc type in all HTML documents so that the browser knows what type of document to expect. We're not really working with 4.0 or earlier versions. HTML5 is not really based on SGML and does not really require a reference to DDTs, um, but we need a doc type for browsers to behave the way they should. So that's important for us to remember and we're going to include that in here. Even though this is a much more simplified version of the doc type, it's one that will be accepted. Now, to also continue, I want to place two other tags inside the head section. First thing I'm going to do is to include in here something called a meta tag. And if you know your basic HTML, as I'm assuming most of you do coming to this video, this is not an introductory video in HTML or even in CSS for that matter, those videos can be found at Killer Sites. So if any of this is very new to you, uh, you can go back to those earlier videos and you can find out more information. But I'm just going to come through and write out HTTP dash equiv equals open quotation content dash type well, before I continue I missed my V here so HTTP dash equiv equals content type in quotations and you can put a little space and then say content equals open quotation text dash HTML and you can put a semicolon right there and then we're gonna include the character set so you call this char set equals UTF8 dash 8 close quotations with a closing bracket so Essentially, all this is really telling us at this particular moment in time is the type of content that we're going to be looking at or that the browser is going to be dealing with. This content is going to be text 
slash HTML. And the character set we're using is UTF-8 so that this document can support many different international characters aside from the very common ones that we would be using. So it's going to be a much more friendly page for international vid visitors or any unconventional character sets that we would generally encounter. So it's good form to put that in. Also inside of our section I want to include the title tag. Title tag being one of the most important tags especially from a search engine perspective. So depending on what your site is about you should include some good keywords as well as a good description of who you are and what you're all about. I'm just gonna come in here and write killer sites CSS layout example and of course I'm going to close that title tag.